Hey everybody and welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. Last episode we explored the Black Hound Inn. Uh, we got a couple more quests and information. We talked to Swainer uh, about the grain. This episode uh, we're going to go check out the creepy tree, the port to tremble, and I also want to go check out those ruins that we passed uh, back before we got to town. Yes. Also the hat. Look at the hat. Love the hat. I shall. I'm never gonna get over that feather. I picked like the coolest color scheme. There's also this temple up here that I haven't gone in yet. It's the only place in this town I haven't gone in and I'm a little worried about what I'm gonna find down there so I haven't done it quite yet. All right, so there's the creepy, growing, glowing purple lady. Caladra de Baranzi. The squat, distended body of an elderly dwarf woman dangles from a thin, crooked bough that sags at the tug of her nose. Noose. Wow. <laughs> sags at the tug of her noose. The bloated purple flesh of her neck, worn away in patches like moth-eaten linen, bulges over the rope that suspends her, and her lifeless head lulls forward frigidly from one side to the other the breeze shifts. You perceive a faint glow around her that casts no light on its surroundings, but there is a tepid warmth to it, and you feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it, not with your hands, but with some aspect of yourself that has no worldly dimension. Reach for the woman. Duh. You take a deep breath, clearing your mind, focusing on your objective. As you exhale, you feel yourself spreading out toward the hanging woman, perceiving all that lies between you and her with new, unfamiliar awareness. Once you have expanded enough to reach her, there is a sudden jolt to your mind, a ringing electric surge of images and words and sounds. Involuntarily, you shut your eyes and feel yourself being pulled down towards some deeper consciousness in a space occupied only by you and the hanging woman, and when you open them again, she is staring at you with eyes clouded in a milky fog, her body still swaying in a wind you no longer feel from a tree that stands planted in a misty void. The woman gives you a slow nod of her head, the rope creaking as she does so, and she smiles at you. Have you come here for me, dear? Or have you gotten lost? Ah, uh, it is both, I think. Yes? No, I like her already. Um... I need to understand something that's happened to me. She nods and look of pity on her face as though consoling a child. The world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there. You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? Remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you have forgotten. You are a watcher now. And a watcher you will stay. What's a watcher, dude? What indeed? Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. Not I, though. Not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair. And here we are, visiting you and I. And it reminds me of better times. Souls pass on, some say through Audra stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it, sometimes more than they were before, but usually less and seldom the same. For all souls there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on, and those souls roam the world, same as you or I either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. A watcher sees, though, knows what to look for. And sometimes they know a person just by looking at them, know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies, see memories even their owner can't recall. A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder! What did you mean when all goes well? That's kind of freaky. Oh, nothing to be afraid of. 
have, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. <laughs> other difficulties. You should see old Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you. Helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kadnua, beyond the Black Meadow. He will welcome the company. Am I imagining this? No, I think not. A pity that. It would be simpler. A mercy then. Do not have to wander anymore, no? Alas, we are here, you and I. Wherever here may be. Up a tree. Here is a tree. How are you able to speak to me? Is that what we're doing? Perhaps it just seems that way. Perhaps it is the easiest way for your mind to make sense of it. I think it is a very good choice. I think I survived to be a wick. I think. You think you survived? Dude, you did. Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul, but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Cold, then. Those days are all behind me, no? Souls break apart over time? Oh, yes. Entropy. Rima Gan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die and pick up pieces of others when we are born again. But less than what we lost. We try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success. A very small few resist Rimargan's influence and stay together through some force of defiance. At least for a time, but they all succumb eventually, I think. Tell me something about you. Me? <laughs> I'll bore you to tears, though. Mm. Who are you? And here I thought you'd come to visit me in particular. Kaldara de Baranzi of the Valian Royal Academy of Animantic Sciences. Not the greatest of their number, but I came here all the same because this was where help was needed. And what happened to you? <laughs> Buttery yellow teeth. I like that. Seeing your blank expression, she catches herself. <laughs> now such a question as though the answer were plain as a rope tied for strangling allow an old dwarf her last bit of cheer <laughs> well i came where i was needed didn't i offered my services to lord radrick for a pittance a humble pittance i was to examine the lord's wife See why the gods have seen fit to poison her womb. Studied her for months, looked high and low for impurities, tested her violence, the permeability of her essence. Do you know what I found? What you find? Nothing at all. A healthy woman, head to toe, blessed with a beautiful soul. Such a sweet woman, too. Meek, but warm hearted. A few months time and the lord of the house demanded answers for a time i told him what he wanted to hear oh yes my lord she is riddled with imbalances i must have time to cure her as the birth drew near he grew impatient as lords do and this is where i've ended up what's an animate sir a student of the soul something so basic yet so poorly understood. 
but so many breakthroughs have been made in my lifetime. Had been made. Had been. To hear the locals tell it, we're a gang of soul manglers that preys upon the weak-minded. And the worst of us are... But the best of us? The best? Inspirations. Miracle workers. My parents were soul twins. Miserable before they met. Empty inside. It was an enomancer who helped one find the other. Turned their lives around. You wouldn't believe the stories. Amnesiacs helped to remember their lives. The suicidal brought back from the brink of oblivion. The elderly afforded extra moments to say their goodbyes. How soon we forget when we're afraid. It's a fascinating science. A fascinating time to be alive in a place like Deerwood that does not control the research, no? I love the Valian Republics for many things, but their recent caution will leave them behind, I fear. Okay, so that's of everything course, she has dear. to say. Goodbye, my dear. It was lovely visiting. Are you alright? You seem lost just now. Yes, I'm fine. That's good to know, but I don't suppose you could tell me what that was all about. I'm a watcher. Well, that's interesting. And I expect this has something to do with the hooded figures in the ruins, hmm? In any case, I appreciate your honesty. Since we're traveling together, it's probably wise for us to share these things. Do you know anything about watchers? Only that they're rare, and they seem to have unique insights into certain soul conditions, as you just demonstrated. Let's continue on. So that was interesting. It definitely helped sort out some pieces of the story. Uh, before we continue with the main quest, though, I'm going to take care of some of these side quests that I have in my journal. Uh, we're going to go back and talk to Trumbull about Swainer. Um, I also wanted to go back up to those ruins, like I said, with my climbing gear and see what we can find. So, I'm here. Come on, friends. Um, windmill, 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 up here. I love that hat. Unless there is a cooler hat in this game, which I highly doubt there can be, I'm going to wear this hat forever. Especially since helmets don't really seem to have any value other than uh, being cosmetic. Trumbull. Good day to you. I spoke to Swainer. And what did he say? I convinced him to leave your family in peace. Why? That's... Really? That's great news. I wasn't sure you'd get through to him. They're out of their minds with drink half the time. I owe you a great debt. Here. To show today's earnings, to show my appreciation. And you can be sure I'll let everyone know what you've done for me. Glad to help. Now we stand a chance of getting through the year. All thanks to you. Safe travels, friend. I suppose I could have had him keep his money, but, um, no. <laughs> Uh, that was the only thing that was in here. All right. Chanters can do more than just chant. I never would have known. All right. Um. So. I want to go back up here. Now that I have Aloth with me, I want to go check out that bear, and I also want to try and climb those rocks. Failwood. 
experience with many abilities that make them well suited for engaging groups of enemies of melee. I like how it's all a picturesque loading screen and then it's barbarians. Okay. So my question is, do the enemies come back over here once I've killed them? Nope. Use a grappling hook! Hook lodges easily. Grappling hook! Climb to the top. With the help of the rope, you make your way up face the wall and over the side. Who are you? Ooh. Ooh. Reflex plus five. I'm totally wearing these. Whenever it's famous, he would like to claim the Valian explorer Fulvano was known as an eccentric who wished to see the world. Where possible, he traveled by foot to gain a local's appreciation for the sights, sounds, and smells of the lands as he passed through. In practice, however, Fulvano often complained that his exploration proved only the world outside of the Valian republics was a foul, smelly place that paled in comparison to his homeland. These gloves are said to have belonged to Fulvano, who often found himself in need of some protection as he climbed harsh terrain or maneuvered through forests. While thick enough to provide some warmth, they are meant first and foremost to be flexible enough not to hinder delicate tasks. And a scrawled letter. I do not think you will ever see this, but you were right, Fulvano. We should have journeyed south together and been safe before it. I would tolerate all the gloating in the world if I might live to hear it. I have put myself out of reach of the beasts circling below, but I am done for all the same. I do not think I will rise again. Whoever finds this, pray for me. Perhaps in the next life, I shall be a trapper of wolves. So you are some super duper explorer. Oh, I can't take that last camping supplies because my camping supplies are full. Super duper explorer and you're bested by a couple of wolf guys. Well then. Climb down. All right. Give me them gloves. Didn't change anything. I have two books in here. Part Darwood part one, Darwood part three. I'd like to find Darwood part two before I read them. That would be pretty cool. Where was the bear cave across the river? Hey bear, where are you going? Rogue and a wizard, venture through the forest. He can totally take down a bear. Before I go in there, I'm totally gonna save. Ooh, cave. How big is this cave? Not very. Oh, found the bear and Pearly. Yes. Um. Neat. I have like this water attacking. Hi. Um. Keep the bear from moving. Arctic where sun rocks. Uh, didn't go the way I wanted it to. Wow. Yes. Already? Uh, don't use that. Yes. Wow. They're just like, fuck me up. Um. Hey, Loth, are you gonna die like a bitch now? Lava will be on seek. Yeah, yeah, he is. Wow. 
Holy shit. Um. Bear done fuck me up. Uh. Let's try again. I shall. Okay, let's try again. Oh, he saw me. How may I help? Oh god, I'm on fire too. Oh god, hey Laugh, why would you do this to me? Oh crap. I'm here. Yes. Lava will be on seek. Lava will be on seek. chance. <laughs> the better part of valor, I shall. Yes, of course. Yes. Yes. Lava will be on seek. I might, I might make it. Holy crap. More fire. Use more fire. Woo! Yes! Yes. Oh, fucking bear. Shit. Indeed. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Indeed. <laughs> Aloth killed bear. Yeah, he did. That was all him. Yes. Indeed. Figure drift suspended in the musty air of the cavern. Its form and features blur and twist in cascading ripples of incandescence. You feel its energy eddying about your limbs, filling them with a heavy chill. Reach out. In the moment of contact, you feel as if you have been struck a blow, head reeling as you tumble helplessly into a waning darkness. Light blooms at the edges of your vision. You feel the sun at your back and the weight of a bow in your hand. You know suddenly that you have come a long way from the veil, hunting deer. Now you are standing before a cavern, and the darkness extends far into its depths. Even so, your friend strides out before you, his red co cloak flapping at his heels. You follow, heart hammering in your chest as he leads you deeper into the cavern. There is a roar like thunder echoing around you. Fear seizes you, casts you stumbling back towards the exit, towards light and escape. You see a glint of steel, and there is a sudden terrible flash of agony behind your knee. Wow. Your thoughts are chaos, lands through with pain, but in a moment of terrible clarity, you see your friend look back from the mouth of the cavern. No way! Nandan, what did you do?
vision received and you were thrown back into yourself. The corpse lies at your feet. I knew those guys were suspicious. Maybe they killed them so they could run away together. You were betrayed. Only a fool couldn't see it coming. I saw him, your friend. I'll find him and see that he answers for what he's done to you. It fills with sticky triumph. The spirit seems to weaken with the force of its own exaltation, growing fainter and fainter until you are alone once more. Giant sword. My scroll through eye sockets and over fevers. Wow. Why was this bear living in a cave with bear pelt rugs? All right, guys, I'm going to cut the episode here. Thank you for sticking it out with me as I fought this giant bear. Uh, if you guys are curious, when you check Obsidian's Twitter, there are tons of people talking about this bear, but uh, Aloth and his uh, ray of fire that I unlocked when I leveled up definitely saved our lives provided I don't hit my other character with said fire. Thanks for watching.